Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is troubleshooting a refrigerator compressor that doesn't start. I want you to first be aware of that there could be multiple different components on the inside of here when you remove this cover. So make sure that you have the power off to the compressor, and then on the inside I'm going to show you the different examples of what could be found in here and also how to troubleshoot them. Check out our ebook and also our paperback, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. In this book, we go over the system preparation for refrigerant, checking the refrigerant charge, and also troubleshooting. You see that in this ebook, you can even zoom right in in order to read the saturated temperatures under gauge sets. So this is available over at acservicetech.com, and we have the paperback available at amazon.com. So in this case right here, this is a pill-type PTC thermistor, and right here you see that the pill is on the inside. So typically you're going to have a closed cover like that, but I just wanted to show you what this one looks like. Here's an external uh, compressor protector, and that is in case the compressor has a hard time starting. So over here you see a current starting relay, and this one is in the downwards position, and another external compressor protector. So they're both mounted here, and on this one right here you have a, this is a start capacitor, and what you have is a time starting device right here. On the inside of a time starting device, which is an electronic control, you'll also have the external compressor protector integrated on the inside. Right here you have a different type of compressor protector right here, and this one is a current starting relay that's in a different orientation than the other one we were looking at previously. As well, you can also have a start capacitor integrated onto your compressor in order to help it turn on. So there's a bunch of different setups, and I want to show you over on this compressor right here that when you remove the PTC thermistor, some compressors have the compressor terminals where you have one on the top and two on the bottom. And over on this one right here, you see that you have one on the bottom and two at the top. So... I would recommend that you take a photo of the components first before you remove them. And some of these components come in different orientations, such as the PTC thermistor right here. This right here is supposed to go onto the run terminal. So in this case, you can see that this one would go onto a compressor where this is going onto the run terminal. And on the inside, it's going to go to the, the start terminal. So each compressor is even built differently as well as having different components. So I have individual videos on troubleshooting each of these components in the description section below, but I'm going to give you a quick run through and quick troubleshooting for each of these style components. Here we have the two types of external compressor protectors and regardless of which one you test for resistance value, you're still going to get some resistance. So we have our multimeter set on ohms and we're going to check our resistance value. And you want to make sure that you don't get OL and you don't get 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance. Uh, you're going to have something higher than 0.0. .0. So in this case, you see we're reading 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms. And basically what's going to happen is you're going to have your common wire attached right to here. And then this is going to be on your common terminal of your compressor. So it's going through this safety device. And if you were drawing high amperage and the compressor was not starting then this would open up the electrical circuit and it would read OL if you were reading this while this component was hot and it had just tripped, but it should reset. On the inside, you see that there's a thermo disc on the inside and when you're drawing a high amperage, you see that this little electric resistance coil is going to be heating up this thermo disc in order for it to pop. And when it pops, it's going to be opening up the electrical connection right over here. So that's how this component works. And right over here, you see that there's a wire on the inside of this and also on the inside of this. On top of that wire, you see that you have your thermo disc once again. And this one will pop, and it has the contacts on the side, and it works under the same premise. And the only thing is this is on the outside of the compressor, not on the actual terminal itself, but it's pressed up against the side of the compressor or the top of the compressor, and it uses the heat from the compressor as well as the... Uh, the heating up of this electric resistance coil in order to to pop this thermo disc right here. So when you're checking the resistance value of these, you're going to not get 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance, but you're going to have something fairly close, like 0.1 usually. 
on these. Now you see that this one has nothing on it because there is no thermal disk inside. When you test this component right here, that is a, a should be a good component, we're going to get some type of a resistance value, and you see we're reading 0.1 ohms of resistance. So same thing with this one, you see that the thermal disk is inside, and some of these have a blank off on the on the face of these, so you may not even see the thermal disk inside, but you got to wait till these cool down and then test the resistance value. So here you see 0.1 ohms of resistance. So if it's OL, it's not going to allow the compressor to start, and you got to wait till these get cool in order to test them. Make sure that when you're replacing these components, you're replacing them with the exact same specs. So on these, you'll see the model number stamped on the side. So with any type of component that you're replacing, you replace it with the exact model number. Here are the PTC thermistors, and if you have one taken off and you can shake it and you hear rattling around on the inside, then that PTC thermistor is bad. That means that it's completely broken on the inside. It should look like this on the inside and not like this on the inside. So you can see that that one was bad. And when it is bad, you may read a very low resistance value because you might have a chunk across there or the contacts themselves are actually touching. And you see in this case that you're reading no resistance value whatsoever. In this case, you see that you have a good PTC thermistor on the inside, and I want to show you what you should be reading right here, resistance value-wise. You're reading 4.9, and that one is good. Let's read this one. This one should be good as well. 4.7 ohms of resistance. And if these are hot, if these uh, were just allowing the compressor to turn on, and now they're in the cooling down mode, they're going to be a higher resistance value. So this is after the PTC thermistor is cooled down that we're checking these resistance values. So this one has 7.5. So how this works is you have this tap connected to the run terminal of the compressor and the power comes in and it puts power onto the start tap of the compressor through the PTC thermistor. But as the compressor is drawing amperage through this thermistor, it's, the thermistor is heating up and it's going to end up opening up the electrical circuit between the run and start. So that's going to allow the compressor to start by having power at both the run and the start for the initial startup period and then it's going to open up the electrical circuit. That's how it's supposed to operate. But if this is broken on the inside, it may not supply any voltage to the start cap or it can accidentally hurt the compressor by applying voltage to the start the entire time and that would end up possibly burning out the compressor, but that's why we have the external compressor protectors as well to help open up the electrical circuit in the case of a problem. These are the time starting devices, and on these you see that you have the external compressor protector integrated onto the inside, and you see it on this one as well, and on the back you have a capacitor. So on this one it's on the side, so there's the start capacitor, start capacitor, start capacitor, and on this one it's right back here. So these can just be removed and tested, so you just take it and you just pull it and then you can test the actual capacitor itself. So this one right here says 15 UF. So we can take our multimeter right here and change this to MFD. So MFD is the same thing as UF and it's reading microfarads. And then you can take a 10,000 ohm resistor across here, or you can take a screwdriver. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the residual voltage off of that start capacitor. Then you can take your multimeter, and you can test your microfarad level. And you want to give your multimeter about 10 seconds, 5, 10 seconds, in order to get a good reading. And the capacitance reading should be within about 5% of what the reading is on the capacitor. So you see we're reading 14.84, and this one right here is 15 UF as well. So you want to give the multimeter time, and that one's reading 15.41. So those are both very close to their specs. In fact, this one's a little bit higher, but for a star capacitor, that's only helping the compressor start for just a very brief moment in time. So just for the first quarter or second or so, 
th that's not going to make that big of a difference. So the start capacitors can be tested individually, and then you can test the compressor protector, such as this right here. You can just check the resistance value. So what we do for that is let's just go back to resistance, which is the omega or the upside down horseshoe right there. And you're going to put one probe right there into the compressor protector and one in the top. So you see that we're reading 0.2 ohms of resistance, 0.1 ohm of resistance. So we went over those earlier, so that compressor protector is good. So if you were to test the compressor by itself and check the, the winding taps against the ground and, and check them as well, I have a video on that linked in the description section below, and you check the compressor protector and you check the start capacitor and you know that you have good voltage going in, then you know that this component is bad. So there's not a great way to test these since there's the control board on the inside. So you're going to test everything else around that in order to determine if this is the faulty component. Here you have a current starting relay, and this one is facing the downwards position right here. And this one here is faced in the upwards position, and it also has an integrated compressor protector on the bottom. So we know how that works from earlier. And this one here is a current starting relay with a start capacitor attached. And so this one's facing the downwards position, and what happens is you have your voltage coming into the current starting relay, and then that voltage also goes over to the start capacitor over here, and then it comes out of the start capacitor over to the lead on the current starting relay, and what's going to happen is this is going to allow the voltage from the start capacitor, it's going to allow it into the start uh, tap right here for the compressor. So that's only going to happen after the compressor has a high amperage, and then after that, the iron core in here is going to suck up, and it's going to allow the voltage from the start capacitor into the start tap of the compressor in order for it to turn on. And what's going to happen then is once it turns on, it's then going to drop this iron core, and it's going to uh, basically open up the electrical circuit, and it's not going to allow any more voltage to that start winding. So this right here is how that works for the start capacitor with the current starting relay attached. The other ones are just allowing the voltage coming in. So the voltage right here goes into the, the run. And so you can see that it wraps around the, the iron core and it comes in right here and goes into the, the compressor on the run. And after it starts the sending the voltage in, the, the high current pulls up the iron core and allows the run and the start to connect. So you're going to get the voltage over at the start winding now. And then the voltage is going to help the compressor start. Once the compressor starts and the amperage lowers, the iron core on the inside falls down. And then you're going to have the start tap out of the electrical circuit. And the compressor is going to continue to run by supplying voltage into the run. And then you're also going to have where it's connected to the common terminal through the compressor protector. So I have a video on these as well, so you can check that out for uh, more details. But I'm just going to show you quickly how to troubleshoot these. And if this one is normally in the downwards position, then that means that the iron core on the inside is down, down low. And so you should not get any resistance value whatsoever when you're testing it in this angle. So once you flip it up, if there's... If there's no pitting on the contacts and there's no carbon dust, then you should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. Here you see that we're reading right about 4 ohms of resistance. So you see that this one is older and it has some dust in there and stuff like that. Uh, also, the, the iron core is going to have some force when it comes upwards, so that's going to help it as well to make that contact. So right here, if you had 0, 0.0, that would be bad. And right here, you want to have as close to... 0.0, .0 as possible uh, when you flip this in this direction. Now also what you could do is you can test from here to here to see if that coil is bad. So right there you see that we have 0.1 or 0 ohms you should have an extremely low resistance value. So it should be very close to 0 ohms. 
because this wire is is very thick so so that is all good right there with this current starting relay right here we would test right between these two pins because those are going to the the, the two contacts the run and start and you should not read any resistance reading here so it should read oh well when this one is upright and then when this is downwards you should have a good resistance reading here so right now we're reading 3.8 see if we can get the uh, iron core to sit down there a little bit better so we're still reading There we go, 0.2 ohms of resistance. So you wanna make sure that your probes are on those contacts good, and this one is still good. So that's how you test that. In reference to start capacitors, if you see there's any uh, liquid or oil coming out of the capacitor, then you know that that's bad. In reference to testing, in order to try to get a accurate MFD reading, then you would have to cut the resistor off. This is a bleed resistor. For any time that the start capacitor gets kicked out of the electrical circuit, this is supposed to bleed off the voltage during the off cycle. But you would just check your MFD reading just like any other capacitor. It needs to be within these two measurements right here. It's not so specific because the capacitor is only in the, the circuit for a brief period of time. Make sure to check out our book, which is available in paperback and also in ebook form. The ebook is available over at the website at acservicetech.com as well as the paperback, and the paperback is also available at amazon.com. So we go over the port access, we go over all the different procedures we use to prepare a system for refrigerant, the different vacuum procedures and why you would use one versus another. We go over all the different charging scenarios, we go over troubleshooting. So we go over the, the different scenarios that you could run into when checking the refrigerant charge on an air conditioning system. So we go from basics all the way to troubleshooting. You can check out the full outline over at acservicetech.com and the links are down in the description section below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.